Hey guys, welcome back to another video on integration. In this session, we'll be solving integrals of goniometric functions using the T formulas substitution. This method is particularly useful when we have to integrate rational functions with sines and cosines. We'll be solving two exercises step by step, explaining everything along the way to avoid any confusion or misunderstanding. The timestamps can be found in the comments below, where you can also ask any questions you might have. And with that, let's get into the first exercise. In the first exercise, we have to solve the following integral. So the integral of 1 divided by 1 plus the sine of x dx. And this integral cannot readily be solved by using any of the methods we used in the previous video on integrating goniometric functions. Using the method of t formulas comes down to a substitution, meaning that we will rewrite our integration variable x as something else. And in the process, we hope to get a form of an integration that we indeed can solve. In particular, the substitution that we use here is that t is equal to the tangent of x divided by 2. And this will be the substitution that we will use for any of these exercises. Now, before we can simply plug in this substitution in our integral, this substitution has three consequences. The first is that we want to rewrite our dx as something dt. And this can very readily be done by considering the following. From our substitution, we know that x divided by 2 is equal to the arc tangent of t, which is simply rewriting our substitution. This, of course, means that x is equal to 2 times the arc tangent of t. We can now simply do a differentiation of both sides of this equality sign, and we immediately find that dx is equal to 2 times 1 over 1 plus t squared dt. And this 1 over 1 plus t squared basically comes from the differential of the arc tangent of t. And this is already a first formula that we can directly use in our integration. The second consequence is that we can write the sine of x as being 2t divided by 1 plus t squared. And the calculation from going from t is equal to the tangent of x divided by 2 to this writing of the sine of x, I will leave for another video. And a third consequence is that we can write the cosine of x as being 1 minus t squared divided by 1 plus t squared. And it is these three relations that directly follow from our substitution that we can now use to solve our integral. Because we can simply rewrite this dx with what we have found here, and we can rewrite the sine of x with what we have found here. And we can rewrite our integral as follows. So in the enumerator, we simply have 2 times 1 over 1 plus t squared dt, which is simply rewriting dx. And in the denominator, we have 1 plus, which we simply copy, and then we rewrite the sine of x as 2t divided by 1 plus t squared. And we see that we've now rewritten our integral with goniometric functions as an integral without any goniometric functions. Granted, they are encapsulated in this t, However, the form of this integral is now just an integral of a rational function of a single variable t. And in order to solve this integral, we first rewrite it a little bit. We have 2 times the integral of, and this 2 times comes from this 2, which is a constant and we can put outside of the integral. In the enumerator, we simply have 1 over 1 plus t squared dt. And what we do in the denominator is we put these two terms on an equal denominator, namely 1 plus t squared. And how can we do this? Well, we multiply this 1 by 1 plus t squared divided by 1 plus t squared. So we multiply by 1 and we get the following. So we get 1 plus t squared plus 2t times 1 over 1 plus t squared. And we see that we indeed get the same denominator back because if we multiply this 1 over 1 plus t squared with 2t, we get exactly this term. And if we multiply this 1 over 1 plus t squared with 1 
plus t squared, we of course get this one again. And we directly see that we can cancel these two fractions to simplify our integral, which then becomes two times the integral of one divided by one plus two t plus t squared dt. And the next step is to realize that these three terms can be taken together to form a perfect square, namely one plus t squared. And we can easily check this by calculating this perfect square and indeed getting this result again. And now we are practically done because it is very easy to solve this integral by a simple substitution. So we have the integral of one over t plus one squared d of t plus one, because we can always add a constant number in our differential because the differential of a constant number is zero. And we see that we've written our integral as the integral of one over something squared d something. And this can readily be solved. So we get two times minus one over one plus t plus c, a constant because we're doing indefinite integrals. However, at this point, we're not done yet because we see that our initial integral to solve was an integral with the variable x. And we simply have a solution with the variable t. So we still have to rewrite our result again as a function of x. And to do this, we remind ourselves that the whole purpose of this exercise was to practice on the substitution that t is equal to the tangent of x divided by two. So we can simply resubstitute and our result becomes minus two times one over one plus the tangent of x divided by two plus c. And this is our final result of this particular integral using the t formulas. Let's now go to the second and final exercise, which is quite a bit more involved. So we have to solve the integral of one divided by two times the sine of x plus the cosine of x plus two dx. And before we start, let me just remind you of what we're doing here. So we will be using the t formulas, which stem from the fact that we use a substitution that t is equal to tangent of x divided by two, thereby substituting x for something of t. The three consequences of this are the following relations, that dx is equal to two divided by one plus t squared dt. The sine of x can be written as two times t divided by one plus t squared. And finally, the cosine of x can be written as one minus t squared divided by one plus t squared. And using these three relations, we can readily solve this integral. We simply substitute dx for consequence one. We substitute the sine of x with what we found in consequence two, and the cosine of x can be written as consequence three. So we can rewrite this integral as follows. We have one large fraction, and in the enumerator, we get two divided by one plus t squared dt, which is simply rewriting the x. In the denominator, we have two times the sine of x, which is two times two t divided by one plus t squared. Then we add to that the cosine of x, which can be written as one minus t squared divided by one plus t squared. And then we simply copy this plus two. And again, in this way, we have rewritten an integral with a function of goniometric functions, the sine and the cosine, as an integral, which is basically a rational function of a single variable t. And of course, the goniometric functions are still in this variable t, but we can solve this integral first as a integral of a rational function of one variable. In order to solve this integral, we first perform the following algebraic steps. So this two again, can be put in front of the integral because it's a constant number. Then we have the integral of, again, in the enumerator, one plus one plus t squared. And in the denominator, we first write these two fractions as one fraction. They have the same denominator, so they can simply be put on one fraction. So we have four times t plus one minus t squared divided by one plus t squared plus two 
dt. And the following step, we do the same thing we did before. We will write these two terms in this sum in the denominator as one fraction by multiplying these two by one plus t squared divided by one plus t squared, which is basically one. Doing this, we get the following integral. Again, a large fraction of one divided by one plus t squared in the enumerator. And in the denominator, we get four times t plus one minus t squared plus two plus two times t squared. And the denominator of this fraction is again one plus t squared dt. And again, we see that we can cancel these two denominators and this can be rewritten as two times the integral of one divided by four times t plus three plus t squared dt, which is basically taking all of the terms in the denominator here together. And at this point, we have reduced our integral to solving an integral of a rational function with a second order polynomial in the denominator. And we know how to solve these types of integrals simply by using the method of partial fractions on which I did a detailed video, which I will link down below. The first step of partial fractions is to find the zeros of the second order polynomial that we have in the denominator. In this case, we have to solve this second order equation. Solving this second order equation, we get that the two solutions x plus minus are equal to four plus minus the square root of 16, which is four squared minus four times one times three divided by two. And if this is not entirely clear to you, I refer you to my video on quadratic equations and how to solve them, where I solve exercises step by step. This simply becomes four plus minus 16 minus 12 is four and the square root of four is two. So we get plus minus two divided by two. And this gives us for the plus solution three and for the minus solution, this gives us one. And this three and this one are basically our two zero points of our initial second order equation, which we can rewrite now as t plus three times t plus one. This means that our initial integral that we want to solve can now be rewritten as follows. So two times the integral of one divided by t plus three times t plus one dt. And this is now the integral that we have to solve. The second step of partial fractions is that we want to rewrite our fraction that we have. So one over t plus three times t plus one. We want to write this as the sum of two fractions. And the first fraction will have as a denominator t plus three. And the second fraction will have as a denominator t plus one. And what we are left with is now to find a and b such that this equality sign is true. And how do we do this? Well, we start out by first rewriting again this sum of two fractions as one fraction again. So we have t plus one times a. So t plus one times a plus t plus three times b. So plus t plus three times b. And our denominator will then simply become the product of these two denominator. What we then do is gather the terms with a t and the terms without a t. So for the terms with a t, we get a plus b times t. And the terms without a t, we get one times a and three times b. So that would become a plus three times b divided again by our denominator t plus three times t plus one. And we see now that we've rewritten our original fraction again as a fraction with the same denominator. And if two fractions are equal to each other and have the same denominator, then that means that the enumerator also has to be the same. This means that this enumerator has to be equal to one. More specifically, the terms with a t in front of it have to be equal. And since in our original enumerator, there is no term with a t, 
we find that a plus b has to be equal to zero. And likewise, we compare the terms without a t, so a plus 3b has to be equal to one, which becomes a plus 3b is equal to one. And this gives us a set of two equations from which we can find a and b. From this first equation, we find that a has to be equal to minus b, which can be used in the second equation to find that a is equal to one half and thus b has to be equal to minus one half. And if you want some more practice on how to solve sets of two linear equations, again, I refer you to my video on exactly this topic where I solve such exercises. So we have found a and b, and we can now rewrite our original fraction as the sum of two fractions. Having now found a and b, we can directly write our original fraction as the sum of two fractions and thereby simplifying our integral such that we can directly solve it. Our integral becomes two times the integral of one half divided by t plus three minus one half divided by t plus one dt, which is basically just filled in this sum with a equals to one half and b equals to minus one half. And thus at this point we are almost done because this integral can basically be rewritten as one times the integral of one over t plus three dt minus one times the integral of one over t plus one dt where each time we've put the one half in front of the integral. Again, these integrals are very easily solved by doing a very straightforward substitution. So we get the integral of one divided by t plus three d of t plus three minus the integral of one divided by t plus one times d of t plus one. And at this point we are really almost done because we know that the integral of one over something d something is equal to the logarithm of the absolute value of that something, which is what we will use now. So we get the logarithm of t plus three minus the logarithm of t plus one plus c of course, since we're doing indefinite integrals. And this can still be rewritten slightly because we know that the logarithm of a minus the logarithm of b is simply equal to the logarithm of a divided by b. And we can write this as the logarithm of the absolute value of t plus three divided by t plus one plus this constant c. However, we're still not done yet because one last and final step that we have to do is to again use the substitution that we did in the start, that t is equal to the tangent of x divided by two, because we want a solution in the form of an expression of x. So our final result becomes the logarithm of the absolute value of the tangent of x divided by two plus three, divided by the tangent of x divided by two plus one. And of course, this plus C should not be forgotten. And this is our final result. And this brings us to the end of this video. And I hope that you now are more familiar with how to solve integrals using the T formulas. If you have any questions or suggestions for future topics, leave a comment in the comment section below. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to get notified by future releases, consider subscribing. And with that, I thank you for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.